Hello, my name is Martin Warwick. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Telecom TV in London, in England. But I'm reporting from Washington DC in the United States and from TIA 2013, where I'm talking with Kelly Carr, Senior Vice President of DAS Solutions, that's Distributed Antenna Solutions and Systems with Goodman Networks. Kelly, you're very welcome. A lot of buzz around the industry about small cell technologies and their uptake. Where are we in terms of reality? Is it here now or is it hype and still some time away? Well, I, I think it's here now, Martin, um, but it's it needs to ramp up. There's still a lot of challenges in the market when it comes to small cell deployment. Um, a lot of it is resources, and when I talk about resources, we're talking about people that can deploy the systems and turn them on. I'm also talking about light poles and infrastructure. Where are these going to go? When you look at it in the outside environment, there's a lot of challenges to get these small cells set up and deployed. Um, from an in-building perspective, um, I think it'll take off faster. If you look at the numbers and the forecast for the next couple of years, um, they show it ramping up and a higher percentage of those small cell deployments taking place inside buildings. Okay. We're seeing increasingly seeing enterprises, campus environments and stadia uh, becoming more concerned about connectivity and the connectivity issues. Is it just limited to areas that have poor cell coverage, or is there more to it than that? There's much more to it than that. Um, it's really getting away from cell coverage now, and what it's becoming is capacity. With the new technologies that the wireless service providers are introducing into the market, how people use their phones, um, you know, what they're using their mobile devices for, um, they need capacity, they need bandwidth, and they've got to be able to have that no matter where they are. Um, the mobile workforce today, um, enterprises are seeing their productivity going up, they're able to respond to customers more, and that happens 24-7, 365. So it's very important for business people to be able to access their mobile devices and utilize them at any given time. And you see today with the young kids that are out there and, you know, the stuff's happening where they're on that phone all the time, they expect connectivity, and that happens across the board. So it's very important from a capacity perspective. It's, just, it's not coverage really anymore. It's gone far beyond that. Now, Goodman Networks is known uh, for large-scale macro deployments for carriers, you know, big ones like AT&T and so on. How does that experience um, fit in with current market conditions as far as you're concerned? So Legacy Goodman, traditional Goodman, was a turf model company um, with professional services as well, setting up towers for the carriers. Um, but they recently, we recently acquired um, our group, the CSG division of CSI, and we are focused on distributed antenna systems. We've deployed over 9,000 solutions today, so we bring that expertise inside of Goodman. And the thing that we bring to the table now is that we can really handle a project end to end when it comes to distributed antenna systems, whether indoors or outdoors. We can handle the base station deployment, everything that's involved with that on the front end of the systems, right on through to the antennas that are distributing the signal. I'm going to ask you to make yourself a hostage to fortune now and uh, look into the future, always a very dangerous thing to do, but just looking forward a bit, would you say that small cell and DAS have replaced the macro cell tower or will it be a truly heterogeneous network containing both macro and small cell and DA? I think it will be a truly heterogeneous network. Um, towers are not going to go away. Um, over the next two years, for example, AT&T, their plan is to deploy 40,000 small cells, but also uh, build 10,000 new towers. Um, so, and also deploy a thousand DASs. So th it's truly a heterogeneous network that we're moving to and evolving to out there. You'll see the same uh, plans from the other wireless service providers from Verizon and Sprint as well. Um, all those technologies are going to be very important when they're looking at cost-effective solutions and providing that capacity that we were referencing earlier for the users in the mar out, in the, uh, out, in the, uh, out in their uh, mobile environment. Over in Europe in particular, but I guess here as well, and you can tell me about this, um, we're seeing the traditional switch manufacturers like Ericsson and um, uh, Arcatel Lucent getting into the small cell market big time. Is that, is that 
impacting you here as well? It is. Uh, they are here as well. They're introducing new technologies into the market. Um, and, and we'll see where it goes. It's, it's very interesting now. Again, there's a lot of challenges today. These uh, technologies that are bringing out, these small cell technologies, are basically single carrier, single technology solutions. So they still have a way to go. Um, but it, they are, everyone knows that small cells is the buzz. It's what the carriers are talking about. Again, it's, it's a lot about efficiency from a cost perspective, from a deployment perspective. And uh, so we'll, we'll see where it goes. It, it'll be very interesting over the next couple of years. Okay, Kelly Carl, thank you very much indeed.